This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Good. Okay. So, Shkoyach again. <coughs> Welcome for coming. This is Mamashe. Fascinating to this Hashem to see such a full next medrash over here. Even while everyone else is Bain Hazmanaming already. Over here at Landers. <coughs> I understand there's a tish set up for the Mashgiach's uh, Seder a little bit later, pre Seder, pre Vad Seder. So, you have a. Yeah, Baruch Hashem, so much, so much to nash from over here. You know, I, I don't know, it's a good thing there's no rewind button in life, because I think sometimes I would say I'd want to go back and do it all over again. But no, it's forward only. As the Welt says today, is the youngest you will ever be. I remember once taking an uncle of mine to the doctor, and uh, he was, his like, leg was bothering him. So the doctor said... Um, you know, it was, it was an extra stroll. And the doctor said, he, yeah, listen, you know, and he was trying to tell him that uh, at your age I'm going to put my foot up because I have a cellulitis, not because I'm trying to prove a point or anything. Um, it's very interesting. I, I, I said this story last week somewhere that there was a Sama Oretz by the Seder that said, before Mahisha Amda, Magbiya Samatzais, the Yichas is a Kais. But in his God, the word Chav had some charcoal on it. So he said, oh, we are. Which is a foot. It doesn't say which foot. So he said, okay, so we will do both feet. So they put both feet, everyone put both feet on the table. Someone came over to me and said, that's a nice thing to say. I said, come on, cut it out. So then I got this like cellulitis. I had to keep my feet up the whole time. I said, you know, don't make fun of people when they criticize you. That's my uh, little thing. Tidbit. Anyway, so this uncle of mine. Um, the, he, the, the doc, he wanted to get his foot a little better. The doctor told him, this was a, such a beautiful way of saying how old you are. The doctor told him, <coughs> he said, Moshe, you know, he said in Hebrew, my Hebrew is, how many Afrikaans did you eat in your life? So he said, they made a cheshben, if he started eating Afrikaans, let's say at the age of three, he would say, uh, I don't know, about uh, 80 Afrikaans. He said, after 80 Afrikaans, your foot is a lot of hurt a little bit. So his answer was, he said, my right foot had as many Afrikaans as my left foot did. How come that doesn't hurt? You know? <laughs> if my right foot can work after 80 Afrikaans, so my left foot should work after 80 Afrikaans as well. So not as bad as that. Uh, you know, the doctor says, get out of bed, and the old man says, and why should I? He says, I just had surgery. He says, no, you got to get off and force yourself. He says, doctor, you don't know what it feels like. He says, I do know I had the same surgery a couple of weeks ago. He goes, you didn't have the same doctor, so uh, <laughs> how would you know? Anyway. But, uh, so I heard the story about this person <coughs> that he went, uh, he said, you're in a drasha. The rough said, that we don't live forever. We don't. I mean, not in this world. <coughs> There's the other matriya, but we don't live uh, forever. So he said, and the way the rough said, is only a certain amount of afikaimans that you eat. So he told his wife, we're moving to Yisrael. He said, why? Because there's only one seder. So he figures he'll get double the amount of afikaimans. <laughs> okay, we'll leave that for a separate year. Uh, where that goes. But that Baruch Hashem every year, I think if you look back at your life, and you'll, you'll notice... But every Pesach of your life, it's, your, your life is at a different point. As, 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 you're, you're, you know, as a kid, you'll look back at Pesach in different ways, and as a Bacher, you'll look back at Pesach in different ways, and eventually as a Chassan, that's a Shemday, all of you, and uh, then as a, as a younger man, and as time goes on, and as you get to that 80 Afrikaimen point until you get... You know, the point is you get older and older, and that's your issue with your wife, whether you go to your father or to your father-in-law... And as it gets older, you, you know, your father and father, will kind of tell you, you can stay home now with your kids. And then it's like getting the kids. And then as you get like really older, it's like your sons and sons-in-law, which one, your daughter comes to you, or your son comes to you, all of a sudden you find yourself in the same position. Can you imagine my daughter went last year, now she's coming here, and I, you know. Hey, wait a second. Just yesterday, you were the one in that position saying, you're going here, you're going there. And before you know it, you're the cute little Zadie and Bobby going to your children. Okay? And I want to tell you, life goes fast. Nevel says of art that days go short, years go very, very fast. And, and it's true, Pesach kind of, it's like a marker, it's a marker in your life. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Take a look at your life, stop, clean out the engine, okay, do an oil change, it's 
really what Pesach is. Pesach is an oil change. <coughs> Why do we do an oil change? Because if not, uh, the oil gets so thick it doesn't run through the engine. So you can have a basically heavy, heavy engine and the car runs very sluggish. Do an oil change. Clean it out. Move it. Right Pesach is an oil change. That's it. Empty everything out of your house. Clean out all the chametz. Clean out everything that rises. Change the filters. You know, and move on. And life has to move on. If not, you don't have an appreciation of what life is. You know, this car, this engine is so sluggish. No, it's not. All you need to do is, uh, is go through the process and uh, clean it out a little bit. So again, very impressive that you're all here. Although, you're probably better off being here than being home right now. You'd probably be under a sink someplace. Or, uh, as uh, Eitan put it, so, uh, what Sizzly said, what did you say? He said, as soon as Yeshiva's over, I'm going from Cheyrus uh, Laavdus. Anyway, so, put very well, Eitan. You know, the wife that said uh, to the husband, can you help a little bit for Pesach? So he starts washing the window, and the window falls out, and he backs off and kicks over the chisel. And he goes, she said, never mind, you know how you can help me leave the house? After an hour, he's back. Why are you back so fast? Because I'm mean, sheer how much I can help, you know. How much you want me to help? So, going to my Indian, Indian, I say Indian, uh, one of my uh, kids comes over to me for supplies because he has a, uh, a Nicole, has a pre-Pesach like a day group, which is a nice thing to have. And uh, she says she needs highlighters. Okay, fine. How much are highlighters? Yeah. What's wrong with just plain Magic Marcus? Highlighters, because they highlight different things. Fine, you know, that's brand name, like $1.29 a piece. I said, what is it? You go to the 99 cent store, and you can buy a whole pack for like 99 cents. You know, they come like 100 of them. She goes, it's not the same quality. What do you need quality for? Come on. So she comes up to me with a kid, and his hands are all yellow. And it seems that these things, it just plots, and, and the paint of this highlighter came all over her. So I went back to this 99 cent store, you know, the man from China, and I said to him, uh, hey, look, your highlighter. He goes, Mr. This come hot? He says, it melts. You get what you pay for. Aha. Uh-huh. So we learned that a good highlighter doesn't melt in the heat. Okay? If it's, uh, if it's inferior quality, it melts. In the heat. So the Svasemis says a pellet de gazach, the matzah, the chsam cipher says it. The matzah is very unique. It, it only becomes a matzah in the heat, in ultimate heat. <coughs> Most other things either grow or they burn up. Matzah becomes crisp when it becomes a matzah in the heat. And that's really what Pesach is. Yeah, the, 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 in, <coughs> in the year. There's going to be heat. There's going to be heat. Nothing stays the way it is. <clears throat> but, you know, the Welt says of art uh, that an egg, what's the difference between an egg, a carrot, and coffee? Anybody? Egg, carrot, yeah, an egg, carrot, and coffee. Mayor, what are you saying now? One for the meat, one the vegetable, one for my animal. Uh, oh, you got to be too technical, too t- scientific. I'm to being more... Uh, Homiletically speaking, when, when an egg is put into fire, in, you cook an egg, it becomes hard. When you cook a carrot, it becomes soft. You cook coffee, the aroma fills the ear. Right? You want to be like the coffee that the aroma fills the ear. So the Archaim Kodesh has a fascinating thing. That the Eden came to Moshe Rabbeinu, they said, We smell your carbon pesach. It's a beautiful word to save at a table. So we, we love that aroma of the carbon pesach. We're going out of our minds. We, we got to have this. So Moshe said, I can't give it to you because you didn't have bris meal. So they all ran to do bris meal. And they came. It's a fact, Yerachim HaKadosh. How would that help if they did bris meal afterwards? They weren't uh, counted into the Chabura. They weren't count, you you got to be counted into the Chabura before Pesach. <coughs> so even if they did bris meal later, they still can't eat too much Ravenus carbon Besach. Says the Archaim Kodesh, the Dover Noira, that once they did bris mila, they felt that same aroma in their own carbon pesach. Before they did bris mila, their carbon pesach felt black, dull. Moshe's carbon pesach was like it filled their nostrils, they were going out of their mind. Once they did bris mila, they said, wait a second, ours smells so good. Ours is so gishmak. So he says that in, in the process of pesach, is that we go through a certain process 
where all of a sudden we find our own lives, where the, own, the heat converts our own sorrow to, to bracha. You think about this for a moment. Take a look at our first piece of Svasemis over here. Svasemis is kala goresh y goresh. That, that all of a sudden, you know, the, the Mitzrayim chased them out. So there's extra stress on the Mitzrayim chasing them out. Yishloimer ha'pirish, she'achar hu avoyidah b'mitzrayim, after the avoyidah b'mitzrayim, b'nei Yisrael yigiyim b'oy. I mean, they were pretty much zonked. K'mai sh'kosu b'zayi ha'kodesh. Yibishal. She'ishvui leiv. They were broken hearted. Miroiv ha'yigiyah. They just, they just weren't doing very well. And they felt to a great extent, to a great extent, they felt that, you know, we're working, we're wor- it doesn't work! We tried learning, we were coming upon ourselves, chusim, we did this, we did that, it's useless, it's not happening. There was a sense of, uh, you know, I was nice to my mother-in-law, I did everything, and Messias Nefer jumped into fire, whatever order you want to put that in. So, even after you conk out, after your engine conks out, and you think, Forget it, the Mitzrayim will never let you go. I'm going to show you an interesting thing. Ki ha Mitzrayim! Yigrushu Aysam, the Mitzrayim are going to chase them away. We'll, right? At the end, when the Yidin thought, forget it, we, we exhausted every effort we have, emotionally, physically, spiritually, and we're still here in Mitzrayim. No, no, you keep going. Because at one point, the Mitzrayim themselves, the very force that you thought you will never get away from, they're going to be the ones to chase you out. But who Lilmoid, and this is to teach us, as it's Fasem, as Adav Noira, Havtacha, a promise, lechal adam for all people. She'af she'nis yageya. You look like you've had it. You've had it. You're overwhelmed with anxiety, with worry, with fear. Yom Tov is coming, and Yom Tov is a difficult time for many. Neged ayet zahara, v'nitel ha'koyach mimenu, and the koyach is taken from you. And it looks like, I just can't do it anymore. Yachol achakach lasais, it could afterwards, what could transpire is, v'koyach ha'yet zahara atzmai, that very yet zahara. The things in your life that you are the most frightened of, the things in your life you are the most concerned for, the things in your life that are the most challenging, it's going to turn out that's your Yeshua. The Koive Hashem, thank you so much, Eitan. The Koive Hashem Yachlifu Kayach. Those that are, what's Koive Hashem? Those that hope to Hashem. Yachlifu Kayach, they will reverse Kayachis. The Haven, it says, Bechalavavcha, Bishnei Yitzracha. Sha'achakach, after a person battles the Yitzhahara enough, then what happens is your Yetzirah helps you. And that's the meaning that the Yidin look like they exhausted all options. They're going to be trapped by the Mitzrayim. And at the end, it was the Mitzrayim who chased them out. Now think about this. It's the Mitzrayim who created Pesach. If Pari had not been in action, notwithstanding Kaddish Baruch Hu making him in action, but if the Mitzrayim had not been in action, there wouldn't be a Pesach, right? Uh, stubborn. If Haman hadn't been Haman, we wouldn't have a Purim. If uh, you can keep going, you know. If some uh, Galach, I don't know, in the 13th century didn't say Jews have to walk around with a skunk's tail on their head, Chassidim wouldn't have Shreimloch, I don't know. But what happens is, uh, Klal Yisrael has an inborn Kayach to, to keep riding things out. And when it looks like all their opportunities of bracha fail, it's the Sat in itself that chases them. I think it was El Yemei Ablach who ran away from, uh, who was, was a Messira against him. He had to run to America. He had to run to America. And at the end, it saved his life, because nobody in his town survived. So he said, you know, go figure it out. Go figure out that uh, his greatest enemy is the one that saved his life. We don't know who, what happens and where it happens and how it happens. I remember uh, this, fellow was telling, this fellow was saying in a speech that when he was young, he was a big campaigner to free Russian jury before your times. So that was like the, the movement on the colleges in those days. The Russian jury, Russian jury. It was being violent. And the Russians had um, arrested this, this girl. I don't remember her name. Called her Rachel something. She was a refusenik. She was fulfilling Tyre and Mitzvahs. And they locked her up. And there were big demonstrations on college campuses. And there was going to be this huge demonstration on the college campus. Really big time demonstration. They were raising a lot of money. They printed pins and all kinds of things, and they're going to free her, and they're going to free her, and they're going to free her. And right before the demonstration was supposed to kick off, and it was going to get prime-time coverage, somebody came running and said, guess what, she was freed! And remember the heads of the demonstration go, oh no! <laughs> Those Russians, they always mess things up! Why do they do that for? Right? Right? Who's the enemy, who's the bracha? It's very hard to figure it out in life. It's going to be very interesting. 
when we get up there in Shanayim after 120 years. And we're going to see the picture of our life. We're going to say that the very things that we were worried about, the very things that we were concerned about, the very things that really hit us the hardest, is the reason we were alive. Is the reason we were here. It was the purpose of, purpose of our living. So we don't, trust me, we don't want Hamans. And we don't want the Hamans in our own life. But at the point that they're there, and at the point that we kind of exhaust all of our kaychas, so understand that the Indian of Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim, as Fasemus explains it, is that the Mitzrayim will chase you out. That the Kaddish Baruch Hu is Mahapach, the Kayach Ra, and the Kayach Ra is the very Kayach Ra that becomes the Toy. So Fasemus says a theme that is constantly repeated about Shabbos HaGadol. If you look in the next piece, Ki B'Shabbos Zeh, this upcoming Shabbos, as the Shemiz book, we should all make it, isn't it right? Saif Hashan is the end of the year. Nisasvin Kol Nun Shabbos. There's a big convention this Shabbos, big convention happening this Shabbos, of all the 50 Shabbos. Kol Hanun Shabbos, Hashan, all the 50 Shabbos of the year, list guys legula to be zaycha to geula. Ki bechal Shabbos, every Shabbos, yesh p'chinas Yitzias Mitzrayim. There's a p'china of Yitzias Mitzrayim. Ki dechsev zaycha Yitzias Mitzrayim. Now what happens is all of the frustrations during the week and all of our problems during the week, and all of the uphill climbs during the week, and the smoky stairway, so to speak, that we have to work our way through, that all of that really gets deposited in the bank on Shabbos if we withstood in a sign. And every Shabbos is Zechel Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Shakal Shari Bina Yesh Lehem Mitzori. Anytime you're Zechel to Bina, you're Zechel to some type of, of, a, of a deeper understanding, it has to come through breaking through a wall, breaking through a border. Huh, the Mexicans would only know this. Like it says in a different place. It's interesting. There was Rav Vosna used to talk about a Rebbe of his that uh, he, the, 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 he said he was able to look at your forehead and he knew exactly where you were, what you did last night. So Papa dying. Rav Vosna used to talk about this a lot. He would say when he would come in, the Bachram would all cover their foreheads. And he would tell them, it's not going to help. And he told one Bachram, this was a very fascinating story because you would think he told the Bachar, ah, I saw what you did last night, I saw what you ate, I saw what you... Th-. No, he told him, you played Monopoly last night. Ah! No, that it, within itself is not the Avera, he said. Great little Tyra, right? You needed a little break of it. Or he said, every time you won another hotel, you were so enthralled, you were so excited. You felt so much power in your hands. He said, what a pity, you don't know how much of actual wealth in your life was depleted through that. He said, it's a pity you lost it through that. That's what he told him. He said, the Boshem once said, they saw someone riding on a horse, like this uh, kid, high, and he was holding a stick, waving it high. They said, he's imagining he's the king. And his imagination is so real. His imagination is so powerful that he actually lost his opportunity to become king. He was supposed to come his way, and, 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 and he lost it. And so the, the, but it's the same way the other way around. Meruba mida toiva. But a person sometimes anticipates a daiger, anticipates a tzara, we're worried about something, we have anxiety over something. And we deal with it, we say, the I know what can happen, I know my life is in your hands, please help me. You were yoitzah with that, the actual gzeh. But it goes the other way. The zeh nohek, says the Svasemus here, in the second uh, paragraph, b'chal adam, she'af nekuda, das haktan, even the smallest nekuda, yesh lo chemishim she'orim, that's 50 she'orim, or b'chal shabbos, every shabbos, niftach shar echon, another shar is opened up, like it says, each Shabbos, another Shabbos is open. So whatever troubles we're going through our life could lead to bracha. And the door of that bracha <coughs> is every Shabbos. So Emes, it's true, it's not, it's not just every Shabbos, it's every day. Shagam b'chol yoy, every single day. Mitzvah, there is a mitzvah, lisko yitzias mitzrayim, to mention yitzias mitzrayim. Why? Because this Indian that every tzara can be broken through to bracha, if you really want to subdivide it, you want to look at it under a more sophisticated microscope, says the Svas Emes, Ki nechlak, it is divided gam le the 365 different bechinas. Every single day of the year, when you wake up in the morning, there is a hashgachem and a shemayim from the first time you stub your toe in the bed as you're running out, Yowch! to, uh, you know, whatever other thing, your roommate then screaming at you for making noise, adding insult to injury. And or anything else that goes through your life, or the more serious things that come your way, or the different concerns that we have, 
But even I could have, would have, should have. You know, you, I was going home and I could have booked a ticket yesterday and today it's $700 more. No, it was, you, it was the shared Rosh Hashanah how much she was supposed to spend. That, that's your sign. Whatever it is, is, is opportunity for bracha. All these things, it's broken up into 365. There's a set. If you saw the whole year of your Agnes Nefesh, of your difficulties, you would think it's unrelated. It's really all part of a very complex puzzle. It's broken up into <coughs> the under 65 parts. Avobachlau, generally speaking, you're talking about the avoidus, the sheishis in Mayamaisa, the avoidus during the sheishis in Mayamaisa, through that avoidus, zoichen were zoichel lotzes, the Shabbos Kodesh, the Kaman Shabbos Kodesh, the liest nifta chashar, the shar should open up. Ke nearly legam Shabbos Hagadl. Shabbos Hagadl will come by Shabbos Chuva. It's just like Shabbos Tshuva, Rak Shuba Pchina So he's saying two things. He's saying every Shabbos represents an opportunity for all of your difficulties during the week to be converted to Bracha. Shabbos Hagadol is like one last chance. It's like all of them come together and there's one last chance to reach back into all the mistakes, the flights you should have booked during the year and break it through. And, it, and, and, and allow for the breakthrough, the breakout into Bracha. Shabbos Tshuva is Shabbos Tshuva. He says that Shabbos Tshuva, oh, it's like Shabbos Tshuva, but Shabbos Tshuva is Me'ahava. What does that mean, Shabbos Tshuva is Me'ahava? So we know the Rambam says that in order to, according to the Mara, in order to keep the kids up by the Seder and to make them all excited. So what do we do for the kids? We give out what? Kloyais ve'agoizim. What's Kloyais? Like toasted, uh, some kind of toasted meat, uh, agoizim or nuts. Imagine today kids getting all excited about some hazelnuts, right? We're giving out Kloyas Vagaizim. Which version? Which year? Which year? Giving out Kloyas Vagaizim? Which version? Which year are you giving out? But they were, the uh, Kedushas Levi says, we'll soon see a beautiful piece on it, is that on uh, Rosh Hashanah we stay away from Kloyas Vagaizim for two reasons. One reason uh, is because it's Gematria Chait, correct? Like the Katz Grev used to say, we're scared of Egres, which is Gematria Chet. We're not scared of Chet, we're just scared of the Gematria Chet. Another reason that we don't eat a Goizim on Rosh Hashanah is because it creates a phlegm, then sometimes you cough, and it's impossible, it's hard to talk. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, so, and we don't want that Rosh Hashanah when we have to doubt. So it's like, there's this lady, but on Yom Kippur, on, 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 uh, on Pesach, with Tshuva may have a Tshuva out of love, so your Averis turn into mitzvahs. So after that, we're looking for those Averis. We we're, 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 we're want to avoid the Averis. Here we're looking for the Averis, okay? We want to get them. There's a focus more on the Chesed, on the Chesed part. There's a focus more on the conversion of Klala to Bracha as it comes in. So basically, somebody once said that from Purim to Pesach, you go through every possible Agnes Nefesh you could have had over the year, just a quick blink at it. It's like a review of all the years Agnes Nefesh. What? Now, let me repeat that. On Elul, you go through all your Averis. Try to do tshuva on them. Uh, from Purim to Pesach, whether you like it or not, you pretty much encounter all of your difficulties the entire year. It just comes fast forward. Somebody once said, how much does it cost before Pesach with a big family? It said $100 an hour, I think. It's just coming. Ta, oh no, I know what that means. Yeah. It's ta or ta. Yeah, oh no. Ta, what? Now what do you need? Pants? No. Oh, you don't need pants this year. But I don't have any. You know last year's? No. Why? That's what you told me last year. You know, today kids take it for granted. You see whole suits staying in camps. My father said, it was it once every three years, Pesach, you got a suit. And he got a suit once every three years, Pesach. He counted down to three years. And it came that third year, and he was so proud, he got his suit. And he hung it up. And he turned around for a second, and then a goat came in and shoot it up. For the goat had an early savior. The goat made charoises out of his suit. He said, life went on. I deal with it. Our happiness and the lack of happiness is based on what we have and what our expectations are. But either way, so before Pesach is what our, we go through all the difficulties in many different ways. There's shidduchim difficulties because it's the time, it's the ben and it's, it's, you know, there's family situations. When a person has a family that isn't 100% the way every other family is, and trust me, there's no family that is the way every other family is. Mm-hmm. Because that's what makes a family unique, right? You see a little magnet on a refrigerator. Shh, everyone thinks it's a normal family. So please, when someone is there, I told you the once. This guy once came out with me. Goes, every family has a mishugna except ours. I say, yeah, really. <laughs> okay, got it. 
But, but again, families are forced together under different pretexts and circumstances, and sometimes it's very gishmak, and sometimes it's very challenging for, for different, in different ways. And the Rabbi Hashem says, don't worry, I know exactly who you are, because over the years there were challenges over the entire year. Now we're putting it all together, because it's this possibility, that's the Koyach of Pesach, that, go, like the Svasem, it says, Gorish Yigorish, that it turns into Bracha. Now I want, I want to read with you a fascinating piece of Avodah uh, Yisrael, that's from the Kajan Samaget. This is very sound advice. I wouldn't give it to your mo- my mother-in-law, but uh, maybe leave it on the table so she can see it with English translation. I, I mean, just the idea is, uh, you know the story, the guy goes to his mother-in-law with a, you know, brings her a beautiful gold-laced uh, initial uh, handkerchief, sports and Tiffany's. She's so, why are you doing this? I, I want it. I want there should be shalom amongst us. I'm so moved. But what's the symbolic gesture behind it? Mom, keep your nose only in this and then things will be good. You know what I mean? So the Yavadis Yisrael says like this. He says, <laughs> We know that the Mishnah says, Any place you bring chametz into, Tzarech Bedika requires Bedika. Ratzalayra. In other words, kal echad, Everyone has to live like to be baidik, B'mokim Shederech HaYetzahara, Where the derech is the Yetzahara, Who are chametz, Yetzahara is chametz, Like the Chidah, the Arizal says, Lishken Shem. You know where the chametz is in your heart. And you gotta, you gotta do a bedika for Pesach. Kal echad, every single person, if he according to his ability, according to his capacity, according to where he's up to. Misha darkai live going to bris lechas v'shalom. A person has yonim with kedushas habris, and I think in this day and age, the girsa should be and for all of us that have darkai live going to bris because of the achman al sanes yonis that are out there. The challenges are great. I shouldn't say all, but everyone. According to his level, for that there's always there's always more work one has to do on Shmir Sanayim, on Kedush. Oy bin Yonei Chas V'Shala, Lirois that he saw things the Mokim in a place she'ain Rishon Lirois he wasn't supposed to see. So Arch you got to check it out. Well, Levayer, be Levayer it. V'Shal V'Tshuva. That's it. Hey, take it easy. Nishka for Alach, just do Tshuva. Ubacharata Gemura. That's all. Tshuva is quite a simple process. It has to be sincere, but it's a simple process. The punishment like them. I don't want to do this. Help me. I did it. I won't do it again. I try not to do it again. You don't do this Avera again. And if it turns out if you blew it again, guess what? Just Shuva again. As long as you're not Echt of Asha. He says. It's not a suffix. Kashbarchu knows you're in the Sinus. Kashbarchu knows your test. He knows what the streets look like when it gets hot outside. And unfortunately, this world. He knows even in the middle of the winter what the Nesiyahinists are. And the Bansha wants us to rise to the challenge. That's our opportunity to convert it to bracha. So, wherever the Yetzirah is, whatever the Nesiyahinists are of this dar, whatever the Nesiyahinists you have in your home, whatever the Nesiyahinists you have in your life, because your Yetzirah is your Yetzirah, it's unique. Tzarech Padika, just look into it. Look into it and do beer chametz on it. And say the Vanisham, I want to get rid of this chametz, I want to burn it, I want to clean myself, I want life to go on. That's all Hashem is Ah, but what's shot in the other part of the Mishnah? Here's where the handkerchief comes in. And where chametz is not brought into, ain sarach bedika, does not require bedika, nira haremes. The remes is like this. There are certain people. They don't, know, they don't look at what their wrongdoings are, right? What did the guy say? I was so sick. The man was looking at his smartphone during davening. Oh, it disgusted me so much, my, my laptop fell off my knees. It was like crazy, right? No people are. They don't look at their own actions. They know exactly what everyone else did wrong. The value may have luck. You say, when he gives Musa, everyone listens. They go, uh huh. Him, him. That's right. A woman once came to Rabaria Levine. He said, you know, her husband's uh, abusing her. He said, I'll call him in. No, 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 that's all, that's all she needs. She complained to the rabbi. So he says, you know, he comes to my home she, a Thursday night. He says, I'll, I'll talk about the union of Kvay So uh, when he finished, the husband comes over to him. He says, good thing you said that because Mechel, when he treats his wife, not good. You know, missed the boat. And Rabbi Sazamu Melser, who was sitting by the shear, came over to Mrs. Al Nelson, the way he treated his wife, was legendary, it was amazing. The Rebbe in uh, Bela Hinda was like, he goes, I know you meant me, 
shkoyach for the Muslim. I'll try to improve. Right? That's how it goes. You know what I mean? So he says, come up if she ain't machnisen by chametz, ain't sarach bedikah. If it's not your chametz, you don't go be boy dick over there. Okay? Nira harem is in the yesh b'nei adam again, which is repeating it for extra emphasis here. She'enim is gichem al nasein. They don't check their own actions. Rakal ma'isim shal b'nei adam acherim that they did to do b'dikah. Do b'dikah's chametz in your own house, not in someone else's house. And then there's this beautiful piece of Kedusha Slavi. Um, the the Svarim constantly repeat that Pesach is a lotion of Pesach. Pesach, the mouth talks. What does that mean? It's, it's the Kayach Dibur. Dibur comes out. Lecheris, the Kayach Tfila, that there is uh, Pesach and so on. But here's how the Kedusha Slavi explains it. It's just unbelievably beautiful. In a Melech Basar Vidam, let's say you get an appointment with a king. Hamatzabal Avadav, who commands his Avadam, lasts his Kach Vakach. Either Madame or Ima, as they're talking to him, they can ask him to return the tzivah, to, to turn over a command. But once the king gave his command and left, then you got to fulfill the command. The guy says, No, but the king didn't mean it under my circumstances. Hey, brother, I can't help it. The king told me what to do. I got to do it. Right? This guy's waiting for a certain uh, turn, a friend of mine. He says, $500 an hour. Finally got a hold of him, and he goes, Okay, okay, okay. He finishes the hour. He goes, oh no, I forgot to ask him the main question. He's like, ah, an appointment, next appointment, six weeks. Right, that's it. The Ba'an Shem is always available. Avo midas ha-Kadosh Baruch Hu loy ke midas basa v'da. She'af she'nesat sluhu oisiyas. Even though ha-Kadosh Baruch Hu put all of the letters into place. V'nivru, and they were created. V'nitzayru. And it, and it, it, it was blossomed into, from, from its plan into the creation. Even though right Beresh is borrowed like him S, first the Baruch created Aleph the Tuf, says the Chayza, the letters of the Aleph plays, and everything else is connected over there. So in other words, the same Sora can be turned into Ritzay, says the Balshemta. The same Nega can be turned into Einig. The Kaddish Baruch who sends a gzera down, it can be the worst gzera. But the tefillah does is the tefillah can take that very same gzera and be mahapach the type. Because the Kaddish Baruch who never really sends a bad gzera, the gzera comes out as a gzera, but as it enters the atmosphere, it takes on the ozone layer or all the other things of the atmosphere. But once we do tshuva, it reverts itself to a higher level into its original form, which is always type. But he says like this: Dimyan hamelech hamedabrim avodav ba'odim lefanav, when they speak amongst themselves. Let's say the king is still standing here. So as long as the king is still standing here, and the king gives an order, and you go, not me, not me! And the guard says, sorry, the king says, wait a second, listen to the guy. No, Taka, not him, right? If the king is present, he can always change it. And the nation, Maloy Kala Aretz Kavaydai, Kaddish Baruch Hu is always here, he never leaves. The less a sar pani mene, there's no area void of the Kaddish Baruch Hu. U kekai chai az, kekai chai az, kekai chai at, Pesach, that's what Pesach is. Pesach, you're constantly talking to Hashem. Hashem is never leaving, because Hashem is never leaving, so in Mele you always have the uh, power to be able to speak. And so I say this every year, a little bit of, a, of, a, of an extra twist to this. Um, it's one of the things I like to do about a Seder table, is before we get to the words of Anitzak, so we say, we're going to cry, and I tell them the whole story with the after of. I don't want to repeat the story, but the bottom line is that uh, the after of says, scream by the Seder table, just like Hashem say, you know, Mitzrayim will save you. And this yid screamed, and, he, and his whole family screamed, and the pirates saw he thought he was going nuts, so he didn't charge him for the rent. Or as another version of the story is that all of a sudden the guy knocked next door, and he said, that my friend beat me up, I want to show you the treasure where he hid, whatever, a bunch of versions of the story. But one way or another, this yid who had no money, and the pirates was about to throw him into the dungeon, he was redeemed through screaming by the Seder. So I always say, we've got to use this power of a nitzak. We have the power of the yidin that are crying in the Mitzrayim. So who are we davening for? So every kid, Every Einikol has to come up to the head of the table and say, who are you going to daven for? Add it to the list. And everyone has to add a name. And one will say, oh, so-and-so needs a shidduch, so-and-so needs a baby, so-and-so needs a refuah shalem, so-and-so needs a house, so-and-so needs shalom bayis. Six-year-old? Like, I made that up. Anyway, uh, and you know, and, and we, each, we each have, like, you, you know, then I got to say, more names and more names. Okay, so we do it, and then we say, okay, everyone have in mind their names, and they're all holding their names, and they're looking out there, you got it ready to go, but you got to give it all you got. And we go, scream, and it's not going to be screaming all the pieces all the way through, till uh, Gal Yisra. 
And then we get up and we do this dance and we sing Chazni Hashem Kilisam Luki Vachal Rachma because Hashem answers. So over the years I've heard different stories. People say they did it and different things happened. So it was this. So this, this, this couple says, they told me, you know, for many years, years ago, we heard this story from you like many, many years ago. And we didn't have kids. And me and my husband were like sitting by the Seder all alone. We had family, but it's very hard for there's no children to go to a family where there are children. Very painful. Hashem should help. And everyone that needs Yeshua, we have a Christ to carry that very deeply on our heart. Be as sensitive as possible. So he said, so me and my husband decided we're having to sit the Seder on our own. That's it. Watch, we have to, this one said, this insensitive remark, that insensitive remark, that's it. We're all sitting there. We're still doing it alone. Right? It says in Shulchan Aruch, you're supposed to, your son is supposed to ask you uh, the Arba, the, the Kashas. No son, your wife asks you the Kashas. The problem is Manishtana. She asks you Kashas all year, right? No. Okay. And then, uh, and even if you have no wife, you should ask yourself. So they, they ask themselves the Arba. And then they come to the, but some of them got into some shuffle at the, uh, right before the Nitzak by the Seder. And she started yelling at her husband. Her husband started yelling at her. You know, one of the milers of guests are, keeps people from yelling, you know. And they're yelling at each other. And finally, the husband says, wait, stop, stop. He goes, whatever my problem is, it's not going to help me by yelling at you. And she goes, whatever well, my problem is, it's not going to help by yelling at you. So why are we yelling? Why don't we both yell to Hashem? So we both yelled our kishkas out together. And it's like Hashem. She said, and year after year, for the last seven years, we had seven boys in a row. So I said, I said so our, our lesson is, we think we yell too loud. <laughs> we think we yell too loud. <laughs> But of course, she said that in jest. That there, there, there is a kayach of tefillah, there's a kayach of tefillah by the Seder, it's a kayach of Pesach, it's a kayach of, of the Dibur, Yaitzel Lecheris, and the Kaddish Baruch should help that we should be zaycha to that, and we should be zaycha even this year to be managed to understand what those Yidin wanted when they felt the whiff of the aroma of my Shredena's carbon Pesach. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.